Hi everybody! Today I have a new plugin for you and this is the Tukan Studios Multiband Processor Series 2. And most of you might know that there was already the Tukan Studios Multiband Processor. So if you already knew this thing here, you should be quite familiar with this thing. But of course there are reasons why I completely rewrote this plugin. And yes, of course, obviously it's all the Series 2 features. So it has high resolution display support. It has all these um, processing options and grouping options and scaling options and all the other series two features like oversampling stability and much more. But the first thing that comes immediately to the eye is that we now can choose up to five different frequency bands where the old one only had four. But there are even more improvements. So the old one had the crossovers only with 6 dB per octave. And I thought that these filters were not steep enough. So now you can choose from 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave. And the old plugin used traditional filters for the frequency band separation, which the new plugin also does if you select this. But if you select FIR, all the filters are phase linear. The downside is the latency. So during mixing or mastering, that is no problem. Reaper does latency compensation. But in monitoring and live sessions, the latency can be an issue. And here on the left, you can directly select how many frequency bands you want to use. And if you don't use all the five frequency bands, that saves you some CPU. But for demonstration, let's get back to the five bands and close the old plugin and just use the new plugin and see what it can do. Let's hear some music for that. So as you just saw, it features a nice frequency spectrum analyzer. And here we can see our frequency bands. So this is band 1, band 2, band 3, band 4, band 5. And obviously we can change the crossover frequencies by just dragging the circles and dragging the frequencies around. And just as all in the Series 2 plugins, you can hold Alt and Shift and click a circle or a knob to type in a number. So let's say we want this filter at 3 kHz. I would type in 3000 and click on this green box. And we have a 3 kHz. So now let's get to the controls. For example, for this orange range here, which is frequency band three, I can solo that. And here in the top box, I can choose um, the output, the overall output of this frequency band. And I have mid and side processing. So if I turn that all the way down, it will be a mono signal or it will be a side signal, so you can widen your stereo image here, or you bring your left and right channel more together. And of course you can reset the knobs with holding Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and just clicking the knob. Then we have the envelope shaper, which is a kind of transient designer or how you want to call it. And you can choose um, the attack amount here and the sustain amount there and switch that on and off. And we have the compressor for the frequency band. So this is a multiband compressor and we have all the usual compressor controls. So let's see what it does with some drastic settings. And the way it is now, the envelope shaper is processed first and then comes the compressor, but you can flip that. And as you can see, you can flip that per band. So that's basically what the controls are about. And now let's sound demo this a bit so you can hear how it sounds. So let's put that back in a neutral position and again hear the music. And the first thing that comes to my mind is I want to have some air in the music. So we want to do something with the treble. So I solo the highest band. And that's maybe not enough. Let's get down here. Well, that can be nice. So let's brighten up this in the mix and maybe give it more stereo width. And get back to the full range signal. Well, yes, this could be nice. 
And then I hear that the snare drum has a very heavy fundamental frequency support. So maybe I want to thin out that a bit. So let's search that frequency band here. And now let's compress this in context. So we take a heavier compression and turn down the threshold already and give it short time constants. That should do. So let's see what we can do to the fundamentals of the kick. Let's solo this bond here and widen this about 40 hertz maybe. And we can already choose some compression here, um, like this maybe. And of course we're still in some level here, so I want to push that to give all that more boom. Just like that. Let's see the sub bass range. And if you're listening to this on a mobile device, on a laptop or your phone, I think you will not hear the frequency range I'm working on. But if you're using headphones, you will hear that. Well, that sounds about okay. Let's compress that a bit. And let's get back to the full range signal. And now let's hear what it does. Okay, that sounds good to me. Let's hear the difference without the plugin and with the plugin. So yes, there is a difference. And this of course was for demonstration. So maybe for a real production, you would like to take more time to adjust all the parameters. But I think you all understood what I did here. Let's do something with envelope shapers. So maybe for this frequency band, for this blue band here, we want to give it a bit more attack and the highs will need more attack too so that the hi-hats and stuff will stick out a bit more. And last but not least, for all who find it difficult to see which bond is which bond here, we can choose from the menu knob colors and then not knob per function, which is selected now, but knob per band. And now we have the pink and the yellow and the orange and the blue and the green bonds with their knob colors. Oh, and I nearly forgot, if you hold Alt and turn a knob, all the frequency bonds will follow but they'll do that with an offset, as you can see. So that's it for today. I hope you have fun with the plugins and bye bye.